Welcome to the Brain Coffee Podcast, where doctors Eric Luthard and Albert Kim unlock life's little mysteries about health, wellness, entertainment, technology, and how the brain makes sense of it all. Sit back, relax, and open up your mind. Guys, well, good morning. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, to all the uh, Brain Coffee goers who uh, join us on a regular basis, you may wonder why we are not in our usual coffee shop. And I think part of it is we're kind of here to talk about uh, our upcoming production, Brainworks. Uh, and so we have some special guests today to talk about kind of the what is really a new genre uh, yeah. of, uh, of, I guess, entertainment. And so maybe as some brief introductions, uh, one of, really one of the inspiration for Brainworks one, Brad Eastman, our, our director for uh, Brainworks two, which is, I think, a bigger, really more unbelievable production, which is going to be uh, Seth Gordon. Maybe just take a brief moment to kind of tell us about yourselves. Sure. I'm Brad Eastman. As Dr. Luthard stated, I was the inspiration for BrainWorks 1. That's because six years ago, I was diagnosed with a baseball-sized brain tumor in the right side of my brain, which ultimately ended up being malignant. So it was a, yeah, a double whammy, I guess, brain tumor <laughs> and brain cancer all in one. Well, after your delicate hands and the amazing care team that comes with you performed a nine-hour surgery on me, I'm happy to say I am tumorless, um, had a little chemotherapy and 30 rounds of radiation, but here I sit living a full spectrum life. Thanks, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Seth Gordon, and I'm a theatrical director and producer. And uh, uh, about three years ago, I think, I was approached by uh, KETC, the Nine Network, about coming on to uh, advise them about uh, producing theater. You know, when I tell uh, my colleagues in the theater world about my exciting next project, they say, oh, who's producing it? And I say, well, it's a co-production basically between a hospital and a television network. <laughs> <Right>. Okay. <laughs> right, right. So I'm the person who's there to uh, make sure that an understanding of what theater is and how theater is produced and how theater is put together is bridged. Uh, for the hospital and the network to understand. And then I'll ultimately be directing the theatrical production that uh, KETC will record and ultimately broadcast. And I think really one thing maybe we should talk about is that, that you know, we've had BrainWorks 1, which was a fantastic success. It won yeah. an Emmy. And we should talk a little bit, I mean, and BrainWorks 2, kind of really the theater of neuroscience, is really taking it to the next level. Right, and maybe it's really worth talking about some of the differences. I mean, this is a big production. Well, I think it's going to uh, just be a much more involved production. Right. Uh, the, the sets and the costumes and the lights and everything are going to be a lot more involved than they were before. We're going to be in a real theater. Uh, uh, the Sheldon is a beautiful place, but uh, the Loretto Hilton Center is uh, a real theater with uh, all the accoutrement that a theater uh, provides. And uh, the Nine Network approached four playwrights who are nationally known and who have personal connections to the brain challenges that they're writing about. And they commissioned them to write four one-act plays, each approximately a half hour in length, uh, about, uh, that are based on actual cases that you and Dr. Kim had and that uh, involve, uh, while well, they're based on real uh, stories, fictional characters uh, in stories of their own devising and then you and Dr. Kim become characters in each of these stories. Uh, playing yourselves, you're going to come in and perform uh, with professional actors. And that's what uh, this presentation will be. And I think, you know, because a lot of people ask, you know, what exactly is this? And I think really in many ways, this is really a new genre, right? And that uh, yeah. it's really creating something very distinct from, it's not National Geographic, it's not just a show about science, it's not just about medicine or the, the wow, gee whiz type of stuff. And it's also not purely theater. Well, it's theater in the sense that we're gonna be in a theater and right. it'll have all the things that theater has and it'll have actors who are playing other people. It'll also have actors who are not playing other people, they're playing themselves. So it's a weird combination of a whole bunch of different genres, I think thrown into a pot and turned into a soup in a way. <laughs> uh, it's fictional, yet it's based on uh, very, very uh, distinct and real stories. Uh, the characters are all based on very distinct and real people, though uh, they've become uh, fictional works of fiction by virtue of the fact that someone else has written the words that they'll be speaking and then any character really becomes a fictional character when another person embodies them mm -hmm. 
And so the fact that actors will be playing these people immediately makes them fiction. But the stories are real and the science is real. The science is very real. And so it's a weird combination of uh, drama, uh, comedy in some cases, mm -hmm. uh, but also something that you might call informational theater. Well, you know, I think what's really neat about even just, you know, having us here today is that, you know, that Brad, you know, if, if for him saying it's honor, that, you know, it, that really the reverse is true, in that Brad was the inspiration for the first Brainworks. And, and really how kind of people and their stories can really inspire kind of everyone around them. And, I, you know, I think one of the things I love to tell about Brad is that uh, when we think about inspiration was, uh, yeah, again, I did your surgery a while ago, but a year to the day after you had brain surgery, he ran his, his, uh, his, his next marathon. You know, isn't that right? And uh, that is correct. And I won. Yeah, right. And he won a marathon. <laughs> uh, now, you know, I, I most I didn't think I told you this at the time, uh -huh. but I actually ran off course. So I ran longer than the actual race was, and I still won. I mean, you know. So, <laughs> and I think, but what I love about that story is that uh, that we, rising to the occasion, and, and I think that theme really carries forward to the uh, brainworks today, and that we really kind of talk about this idea of fighting the good fight, you know, kind of like ra kind of ra raising yourself and the people around you to the next level to kind of deal with the problems as they come. So, I mean, and I think uh, Seth has been working in theater for a long time, so it's really been a privilege now to kind of really bring kind of the experience that we have from, you know, kind of our personal stories, our clinical stories, and really taking it to the next level with an, another level of, you know, I think, direction and production. I mean, Seth, what do you think? Well, uh, uh, what's exciting about live theater is uh, the big difference b between live theater and uh, going to the movies or watching something on television or watching something on your computer mm -hmm. is that you have the energy of, uh, in the case of the production we're going to be doing in July, about 750 people mm -hmm. around you sharing the story. And uh, it makes it much more of a communal event. I don't know if you notice, if you ever watch a comedy alone in your living room mm -hmm. on television, you don't laugh out loud, chances mm -hmm. are. Uh, but if you watch it in a movie theater or even if you watch it in a live uh, production, people can be rolling in the aisles if something is very, very funny. All right. And that's because we're sharing the experience together. And that's something that uh, Brainworks in July uh, at the Loretta Loretta Hilton Center is going to have. Uh, the stories are uh, four different stories about people who are uh, challenged in one way or another. And uh, you and Dr. Kim will be characters in the play, playing yourselves, uh, coming in and helping to determine exactly where people have an issue and how they're going to be able to solve it. And our audience is going to be watching these people go through uh, some of the most uh, challenging moments of their lives, really tested in the way that many people uh, are or perhaps they go through their whole lives and they're not tested in this way, or perhaps they go through their lives and they're only tested in this way and uh, one or two times. And uh, they get to see how people handle these uh, very, very challenging situations and how science and neuroscience is helping people turn their lives around. You know, I think, and I think that point that you bring up about how kind of being present with another people, you know, both on stage and next to you, has a, a deeper resonance. And yeah. actually, to break into the neuroscience, it's mirror neurons, right? You know, uh -huh. uh, monkey see, monkey do. Quite yeah. literally, that when you see other people kind of experiencing doing things, even if it's on stage and it's it's acted, that it, it it creates those experiences within you much more powerfully than a digital experience. Yeah, absolutely. You can see as a member of the audience, as I was with the original uh -huh. Brainworks, and been to several uh, practice runs and mm -hmm. different uh, echelons as we build to what's going to happen in July, you see the experience of emotion and people's reactions to what's happening. And I think doing that, as you both explained, in a group is really telling. You see how people grasp on to the inspiration that comes, the determination, the perseverance associated with people's challenges. And that's inspiring in itself. But you also walk away from Brainworks with this better understanding of how the best part of our body actually works. I, I've been researching brain stuff ever since I was told I'm going to lose a little of my brain and I have something that's infiltrating it that shouldn't be there. And even after hours and 
tens and hundreds of hours of research just because I care now way more than I did because I thought it just worked. <laughs> right, I now right. know way more right, because yeah. of you and Dr. Kim. I know, <laughs> I can't even explain. I know terms like the amygdala. Right. I right, never right, right. in a million years I could have searched through the dict dictionary and picked a thousand random words, and I never would have picked that one. Well, I think what's interesting about BrainWorks and kind of you know why I think it's been resonating so well is that there's a human element, right? Yeah. You know, there's a thing that we can all relate to. You know, when people get you know faced with you know crises and how we get moved through that. But I think also when you really understand the deeper layers of kind of you know how actually your brain is handling all this, how your brain is dealing with this. Um, it gives you a deeper insight into yourself, and I think there's a real appetite for that. To really, un the more we can know ourselves, the better we can be both as human beings, but also as patients and family members of patients. I think a lot of people associate the work that you do and the work that Dr. Kim do, first of all, as something that's very geeky, yeah, and second of all, uh, as Absol something... Absolutely it <laughs> yes. is, right, exactly. But also I believe that... you even called yourself geeks <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, fully, fully disclosed, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but also something unattainable to our understanding. That's right, yeah. And I think what these plays are gonna do is make them human and emotional. Absolutely. And that, so that's what I'm hoping people will have as a takeaway. They'll come in thinking brain surgery, but the expression is don't worry what we're doing with our day. It's not brain surgery, <laughs> so. Well, uh, there's a reason why people think that way, and part of it is because brain surgery seems like something that we'll never understand. Right, no, that's right. And so hopefully people can understand by the end of this play, first of all, that it is attainable, and second of all, that it may one day be something just like has happened with you, Brad, something that they will have to understand themselves. Right. And when they do, they can embrace it and they, they can uh, overcome their own fear that uh, this is something that will always be over their head. I think that's right, whereas the more you can make kind of people informed about their brain, the potential diseases of the brain, it, that it makes, kind of, I think it fundamentally contributes to both that person's health and, you know, health of our society at large, that we can hopefully contribute by advancing understanding on a really basic human level, kind of at all these, you know, different elements, that people will be more informed patients in the future. Yeah. We're, we're at a time, more so than any in history, where people actually care about their health. They're no longer taking marketing for marketing terms right. and just banner statements. They're now really investigating it and says, is that fact really true or what does that really mean? And I think in many cases they don't have a trustworthy source. What better trustworthy source than to have the people who are saving lives? Yeah. They're proving it with lives. And these lives aren't just vegetables lying in bed until they pass on. They're lives who are actually going on and doing things not to be narcissistic, but to use myself as yeah, an absolutely. example, <laughs> right. is right. I was out of, what, surgery for a couple months, doing some rehab, I went back to work, I ran a race a year from the date of my surgery, then I had 60 rounds of chemotherapy and 30 rounds of radiation after that. I ran during that whole time, I won my age group in a St. Louis local triathlon series. I've now started my own business, Every time Brad visits me, he brings a cooler full of his teas. <laughs> and my entire, you know, kind of like all the nurses and staff are excited because we get to drink Brad's tea. <laughs> like, and it actually is quite good. So, and I, But I think, you know, on a larger level, it's just, you know, what I think that, that whole effort embodies and which, again, is another inspiration for me is how can we can take kind of the challenges and the adversities that we face and turn them into something yeah positive that not only benefits us but benefits people at large and i think that you know that story is you know it, it resonates and i tell it a lot of how you can really turn a negative into a positive and it's really a, it's a wonderful thing and, and how do you do that right it it didn't just happen organically no pun intended but it happened because there were great minds yeah in my, that just became introduced into my life. Those great minds had access to great technology and exponentially growing research. All these things are byproducts of what Dr. Luthart and Dr. Kim do daily. How they interact with new cases, how they work and develop their own innovative technology to save people's lives and put them back in a situation where they can positively influence the human population. That's what BrainWorks supports in a way. It supports the education, but it also supports the innovation side of what we want, what we know and don't know of the brain and what we want the mass 
human to know about the brain. Yeah, because I think that's right. Is like if we can kind of you know get the message out there about what makes us. Again, we were talking about being geeky, and like yeah. how Albert and I are absolutely geeky, yeah. passionate about kind of what we do and the neuroscience and the biology and the medicine and how we love to geek out on this stuff. Yeah. And I think if we can convey that excitement and passion so that other people out there, even if you know we can just spark a little bit of interest, that it can take other people to that level of, of interest, that I think we have also kind of further served kind of you know the, the population of making the world a better place. And again, I think that what live theater can do with that, it, it's the work that you guys do is amazing and the story that Brad has told is a, a tremendous story. But in these four one-act plays that we're gonna be doing, these are people who have not yet had the opportunity to reinvent themselves. That's right. They're uh, stuck right now in the mm -hmm. situations they're in, and they need you and Dr. Kim to come in and help them out. But the, uh, to not take anything away from what you and Dr. Kim do, the real heroes in these stories are the patients. You bet. And Absolutely. their personal caregivers. We have a story of someone who has a brain tumor, and uh, the, his colleagues at the office uh, have found him to be behaving in unnatural ways and they're trying to genuinely help him figure out exactly what it is that's uh, causing him to behave differently and there's someone who has been misdiagnosed uh, one person after another loves them and thinks that they're helping them by telling them here's what the problem is and they're wrong about the problem right. and they need you and right. Dr. Kim to come in and let them know what's going on with their uh, brain and so all of these stories are stories of people who uh, are struggling, and they're stories of people whose loved ones are watching them struggle and are trying to help them. And they do need uh, the medical profession to come in and help them. But they also, uh, this, well, like I said earlier, this is the greatest personal challenge that they have. And uh, the relationship that, the, that uh, the characters and the doctors develop during the course of the play is something that I think is going to inspire everybody in that theater and everybody who is going to be eventually be watching this on television uh, to live their lives in the healthy and wonderful way that Brad is now. Well, I think you really highlight something that's of critical importance is this notion of relationship, yeah. right? You know that, and it happens on many levels, whether it be the, you know, in the actor's case, you know, you've got the, the, the person with facing the challenge, their caregiver, you know, that family uh, related to kind of the physician taking care of it. And then really, you know, as these stories are unfolding, the relationship you develop with the people in the audience, right? You know, because I think we really, you know, we work very hard to make kind of, you know, this whole experience connectable. Yeah. We want to have, you know, a relationship with our audience so that, again, this kind of goes much beyond like the, uh, the walls of the theater when it's over. Yeah, absolutely. It's having sat through it and having the, the, epi the, idea behind the original, I can tell you that there is a pure connection with the audience. I couldn't tell you how many times people came up to me afterwards and said, you're such an inspiration. I said, I don't even know you. How can I be an inspiration? <laughs> but but it, it's, it's real. And I think that's an important element of this. These cases are not fabricated. Right. They're real. They've what you've dealt with. They've what Dr. Kim's dealt with. You've seen it. The patients have seen it. The family around them and everybody who cares about them have experienced it. So it's like a web and that web grows yeah, I think and, that's and right. it's really interconnected by the human emotion right. and yeah. the human reaction. And to watch that unfold is pretty incredible. Well, anyone who's had the kind of challenge that you've had and that you've overcome, uh, it reverberates throughout their lives. And so again, in, in these plays, we ha you have a wife who is trying to support her husband as he struggles. You have a granddaughter who is trying to support her grandmother as she struggles. And, uh, uh, and, and there are the two plays that I mentioned earlier. And so the more that uh, people are affected by all this and the more human emotion that we're gonna be conveying on the stage, the more uh, there's going to be that connection with the people who are watching. And I think what also is interesting is, again, the reason we call it the theater of neuroscience is that, you know, I think there's a lot of stories that have emotion, right? Yeah. You know, there, there's a lot of stories that are human, and I think that that's of critical importance. But we've really created this, you know, I think this amalgam of you get the emotions, you know, you get the connection, but also, you know, you get the, the, the geeky neuroscience, too. You know what I mean? Like, you get, you really get, you get, I think, a really interesting kind of, uh, kind of combination of, you know, things that you take away from this that I think really makes it unique. The geekiness is emotional, Fair in enough. my opinion. You know, 
And watching you and Dr. Kim figure out exactly how to help your patient is something that you're emotionally invested. Right. No, that, right? absolutely. That's right. And so that gives you an emotional connection to the patients that mm -hmm. you have. And the, because they have such a strong emotional connection to their caregivers, uh, you have that emotional connection to them as well. So that's the connection. And I having been a patient, I yeah. can tell you how critical it is. And for the layman to walk away, the viewer to walk away, understanding that's how the relationship should be yes. with really your caregivers yeah, is point. so important, Absolutely. if nothing else. And, and that was an ex excellent segue into that yeah. specific point. That matters so much in the outcome. There's it one really point. does. Yeah, and that's Dr. Absolutely. Kim and Dr. Luthar take such a passion in establishing that connection and making it be more than, hey, we're here for a doctor's appointment, you know, good. No, it's far deeper than oh. that. Well, there's one play in particular that highlights the loneliness of the caregiver, which is something that I think a lot of people who are either in the theater or who are going to be watching this on television are really going to relate to. And uh, if there's one thing that theater can provide to people around the world, it's empathy. Mm -hmm. And so I think that uh, the fact that this, that the loneliness of this person and how they fight to overcome it and how Dr. Kim in particular mm -hmm. fights in this particular play to uh, help this uh, young woman overcome her loneliness as she tries alone to uh, help her grandmother through her Alzheimer's. Uh, is uh, something that I think a lot of people are going to uh, uh, relate to in a very, very personal and immediate way. Yeah, but and I think that what's interesting is, as I was mentioning earlier, when getting on the geekiness, is that, but we add in kind of some of the deeper insights of why yeah. you, you get that isolation, why that person is not the way that they should be, you know, why, um, you know, uh, the challenges that you're facing, like what are some of the mechanics? Because a lot of times it just seems like this blank faced mystery. Yeah. And, and I think like having that kind of depth of insight and the emotions, I think really provides something in addition to kind of what I think is different from uh, typical uh, theater experiences. I also hope that people will feel less helpless. Yes, absolutely. Because there's, That's there's exactly something right. about being told there's something wrong with your brain. Right, right. That will make you feel like, oh boy, I, there's right, right. nothing I can do about it's, this. It's scary, oh, and yeah. yeah, that's exactly the emotion you yeah. go through. And I, I agree with that. You will definitely walk away not feeling, one, like you're alone, and two, feeling like you're far more informed right. than you would yeah. have been having not attended. So I remember you, you referred to your tumor as the alien. Remember? <laughs> like, yes. You know that, I call it the alien. That's, that's right. right. When uh, this kind of this foreign agent, you know, that yes. uh, is, is kind of inside you, you know? And, yeah, uh, and you don't know what to do. You've never, you've never experienced, life didn't prepare you for this. Yeah. I'm not sure I ever in a million years would have ever had a conversation with a neurosurgeon, let alone, what are we, probably on a hundred now conversations? <laughs> More than that, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it's... It's all attributed to this alien, which I feel far more informed about. I feel confident about where I am in my life and the progression of the disease and how we're combating it. I mean, we're on the same page every yeah. day. Yeah. I, I'm confident in it. So absolutely, it's going to address that void of helplessness. Yeah, that's a really good point.